Hello and welcome to the Middle School Bookmarker Show. My name is Chris. And I'm Joellen. We are teachers reading the middle school novel Seed Folks by Paul Fleischman. Today we're covering chapters five and six. Those are the characters Leona and Sam. If you haven't read those chapters yet, you should go do that now and then come back and listen to our conversation about them. And by the way, we're going to get this whole show wrapped up in just 11 minutes. Because 11 minutes is all you need to... Stink up your local public health official's office with a bag of old, putrid, and disgusting garbage. And you know who does that? Leona. (laughs) And Leona's chapter starts off with a description of her grandmother, a very fond description. And she talks about how her grandmother used to drink golden, golden rod tea every day instead of taking other medicine. Doctors would tell her to do other things and she would ignore it which honestly does not sound like a great idea to me. You should probably listen to your doctors, but she did outlive most of them, so there is that. Yes, she did. And she was kind enough to go put little packages of goldenrod on their grave sites just to wish them well. I thought that was um, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Leona walks home one day. She lives in the neighborhood, and uh, she sees these other characters that we've met previously tending the vacant lot garden. And she decides she'd like to grow some tea. Now, perhaps there's a connection between Kim's father and his beans and Leona's mother and her goldenrod, an honoring, if you will, of their parents and grandparents. I noticed that as well, because they they both are being brought to the garden for the same reason. Like you said, they're honoring their their father or their grandmother in Leona's case. Uh, And I think that's really beautiful because they're they're inspired to join what seems to be a community garden forming uh, to honor people that were really important to them in their past. I think think that's beautiful. Yeah, I do too. So Leona realizes that other people might also want to jump in on this community garden if they can get it going but there's so much trash remember our friend old janky garbage fridge he's still hanging out there there's also some random piles of trash and there's dangerous chemicals that have been left behind some people from the neighborhood are dumping things sometimes there's outsiders coming in it's horrible and it really is not ideal garden conditions Uh, There's a fun line in there that Leona mentions about how the smell was enough to curl a crocodile's nose, and I chuckled at that. I did, too. That's a a good visual, for sure. Well, Leona reminds me of people with a lot of, you know, get up and go. So she's determined to get this lot cleaned up, and the city won't send the garbage people to clean it up. wonder why. And so she wants to get this lot clean for herself and for other people. So... She decides, hmm, this is a job for the telephone instead of the wheelbarrow. What do you think at that moment? What came to mind after I thought about it for a little bit, I was like, what does, what does Leona mean? I thought about another saying about how there, there's more than one tool in your toolbox than a hammer. And well, both these really just mean like there are multiple ways to try to solve a problem. The community members were trying to solve the problem by <clears throat> cleaning up the garden themselves, but that's not going to be enough. So she's looking for another tool in that toolbox, right. or in this case, a telephone in that toolbox <laughs> to try yeah. to get this solved. Yeah. So Leona has experience advocating against school violence because she has sons in a school system that can be, sounds like pretty violent. So she's complained to government officials and principals and administrators before she's got that experience. So she gets herself all comfortable. She puts on some Miles Davis. She lounges out on her bed and she begins to make some phone calls. Yes. And not just a couple of phone calls. This turns into a six and a half hour marathon and she's calling government officials from the federal to the state to the city government she's calling everybody canvassing the globe so to speak and she's explaining what her needs are for the community she's thinking that maybe they're not caring too much about her neighborhood at this point six and a half hours is a really long time to be on the phone with anybody let alone to be frustrated repeatedly call people and then not get the answers you want and just keep calling for six and a half hours so what does that tell us about leona does that remind you of anybody she's brought up in these couple short pages well if you're bound to determine that you're not going to visit a doctor and you do the same routine every day you drink the same tea with the same golden rod you are a woman of constitution i like to say you know what you want 
and you're going to stick there and do it until something gets done. I, that's how I see Leona, just like her grandma. I completely agree, <laughs> and we're going to see that she does get that done. But first, she's playing phone tag. She's yeah. getting kept on hold. She's finding people that she needs to talk to that are out to lunch. And this goes on not just for six and a half hours one day, for three days leona eventually realizes that the phone's probably not going to work or it's going to take forever so she gets creative (laughs) yes she does so she takes off to visit in person the public health department and she tries to plead her case but still you know coming up empty-handed no one is listening until okay chris you know what she does oh (laughs) <laughs> what a fantastic move. One, I feel like I could I can visualize this perfectly in my head. She's talking to the secretary, no one's listening, and then all of a sudden she pulls out like I imagine she had the bag behind like a counter where they couldn't see. Yeah. And she just opens it up and all of a sudden the smell of hog pens and maggots. It fills this government office. <laughs> and you know what? It works. The city, the city finally takes a meeting with her. After she opened up the garbage bag, after the smell gets into their offices, they finally want to do something about it. Uh, it, It's looking good that maybe the vacant trash lot might actually become a real community garden. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when uh, Leona brought the trash with her, she didn't open it and leave it. You know, she dealt with the smell as an act of protest. She, She showed that she's part of this community. This is what it smells like. So... Let's go with it. And I I do think her grandma would be very proud of her. Absolutely. Yeah, it just, imagine how different it would have been. It would have been way less powerful if Leona had just left the garbage or mailed the garbage or something like that. The fact that she was willing to stand there and put up with the disgusting smell that everybody else was complaining about. She was probably able to say, well, I, this is outside my window. How about you help me come, do, help, how about you do your job and you help me come do something about this? Absolutely. Wonderful ending. Absolutely. And you had said earlier that, you know, visuals are so impactful. At this point, it wasn't only a visual, it was kind of an olfactory smell too. So that really, <laughs> that really woke everybody up and, and she did stick through it too. I like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That brings us to Sam. Um, and we we see that from Sam's point of view, the first couple paragraphs, that we see that the lot is being cleaned up. Uh, mm-hmm. It's unbelievable, actually, to Sam a little bit. And he saw he sees that it's actually available for other people, anyone to use, other people in the community to use. Even more unbelievable. He could not imagine this kind of thing happening. Not at all. In fact, he... He calls it paradise. It's the first thing that pops into his head, which um, is a Persian word, and it means walled park. So he's explaining um, to a character, and we're thinking it's probably Leona, who's also down in the garden, that this is becoming a paradise, a beautiful walled park. That's one of the the really cool things about this book is you you leave the character that you follow, and then I think they're, they're popping up in the background left and right. Uh, yeah. which is really cool. So we just had a Leona chapter, and I think that Sam, our current narrator, he talked to Leona. Very cool. Uh-huh. So Sam then goes on to describe that his occupation before he retired was kind of like a, a peacemaker. He spent his whole life working to promote peace and nonviolence. He did this with governments and other organizations that work with governments. He said that he felt like a fisherman who would patch up a old fishing net that had holes in it. Yeah, uh, another great visual. You could just mm-hmm. see a salty old guy sitting by the on the sand. And now he takes that skill of mending nets, so to speak, and he does it in the neighborhood. Um, he joins people together with smiles, and he's he's really trying to bridge that differences of races in in the neighborhood. He's white and he's of the Jewish descent, but he makes a point to smile and talk to everyone. He um, he really wants this community to pull together. And it's not very common in a neighborhood like this, as we've seen before. He wants to sew up the rips in the neighborhood. Joel and I got bad news. We got about less oh, than no. two minutes left, so we're going to motor through this. So he's going to sew up those rips. His strategy is that he goes and he tries to promote friendships between people by starting basic conversations about them. People don't usually talk to each other in this neighborhood because they're 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 not unfamiliar with each other, and sometimes there's language problems. So he tries to solve that. Absolutely, and at his sort of advanced age of seventy eight. 
He's he wants to be involved. He wants to get into this garden, but he realizes he's just too old. So he hires uh, somebody, a younger guy of Puerto Rican descent, to help him. And after they decide, rightly so, not to grow illegal substances, mm-hmm. he has um, a pumpkin patch, which thinks he could raise some money in the Halloween season. Well, it's coming together. <laughs> okay. So Sam, we found, is very clever in meeting his goals. And he mentioned something about a water contest. We don't find out much about that. I guess we'll find out about that later. Yeah. Um, Sam notices one day, though, something troubling. He notices that just like the segregation in the community, where only some groups of people are talking to the, the people of the same race or origin or country or whatever, he notices that the garden is becoming split up just like that. They're only talking to people that are similar to them, and he does not like that. So some of these problems still exist in this garden, and they match the community. Sam is not a fan of that. He notices that there are borders going up in the garden, fences, actually barbed wire. There's keep out signs. There's fights between the people in the garden. There's bottles flying out of windows and bottles flying in windows and bottles flying out of windows again. The garden really might be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, and we are way over time. I'm sorry, Joel. We got to wrap up. Okay. Uh, I think the last main point we got to make is that the author mentioned that Sam was a professional peacemaker. This chapter ends on kind of a downer where everyone's separate. I hope that Sam does something about it. All right, guys. Thanks for joining in. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, hit that bell. Next time we are reading chapters seven and eight. That is Virgil and Say Young. We will see you next time. See you next time.